Hello and welcome. My name is Benjamin Carano and you may be wondering why I'm choosing to go beyond the genre of just uploading my music videos. And the reason for that is recently I have decided to combine myself into one channel. And with that said, I am more than just a musician. Um, I'm a builder, crafter, and I work with a lot of things. So this next project is building a motorized bicycle. And what inspired me to build this was originally I was just going to be getting like a moped or scooter um, to drive around town with my license. But after looking at them, I really didn't wasn't pleased with the quality of a lot of them for the price. And I decided that it would be really fun, since I have the skills of building and I have the tools, to build myself a motorized bicycle to get around town with my license. So that's the reason for this project and just the fun of building it, obviously. <laughs> so. With that said, I am going to be probably coming out with about six tutorials on following the progress of building this motorized bicycle from start to finish. And if you have any questions, please comment below. And I will also be sharing the links to all the parts I used in the description of this video. So be sure to check that out. If I miss anything, just let me know and I'll put it in there. Um, I will not be including the links to small bolts, nuts, washers, etc. because they can be found very commonly at any local hardware store and that's where I found them. I did not have to order them online. So if those aren't in there, uh, you can comment and ask me what I used or you can uh, look at the video and I'll be explaining the little miscellaneous parts that I'm using. But every major part will be in the description of this video so check that out. I did the work for you. It was a lot of research. So please support this channel. Subscribe comment if you have any questions, but with that, let's get building. In this tutorial, I'm going to be introducing the parts required that I use to build this motorized bicycle. Now the biggest part of a bicycle is obviously the frame. I am going to be building the frame piece by piece as well as the whole bicycle. I'm not using a pre-built bicycle or bicycle frame because I want to give this a really unique, interesting look. So starting off with the frame I used, I have here a CDH silver frame, aluminum frame that I ordered off of Amazon. It has a built-in 2.4 liter gas tank here. And the rear spacing for the wheel is 135 millimeters from edge to edge here. You do not want to get the 150 millimeter frame. Um, because they just don't make a back wheel for it. So this is going to be a little easier to find parts for, but I still had a very hard time finding the parts that went on this frame because this frame was the reason that I'm building this bike, really. I absolutely love this integrated gas tank. It's just going to give it a really clean look. So this is just the plain aluminum uh, buffed for any finish you want to do. Uh, you can get colored ones, but this was on Amazon for about $150. Now the second important part of the frame is the front fork. I ordered this mountain bike front fork also for a 26 inch wheel with a hundred millimeter spacing for the front wheel and disc brake mount here and a one and eighth inch steer tube diameter. So this is also aluminum. The reason I'm doing lots of parts out of aluminum is I'm not keen on lots of rusting. So this will be a little better for a ride every now and then in the rain. So this is the front fork. The next part I ordered is the handlebars. Now these are just Retro Cruiser Sunlight aluminum handlebars that I bought for $37 from Sunlight. And it has a center mount here. These are just standard commuter bike, beach cruiser handlebars, whatever you want to call them. I just love the curved look and I also love that they're silver, they're going to go well with everything else. Now we'll get into the small parts that I'm using to put together the frame. Those are the main frame components. Now we have here our stem and this is going to mount on the steerer tube and the handlebars to mount the handlebars to the steerer tube and before we put the stem on we have a spacer kit here so that we can raise our handlebars where we want them before we cut the top of the steerer tube off 
to the height we want it. So those two pieces are for mounting the handlebars to the steerer tube. And of course what we have to do first in preparation for our frame is press the bearings in. We're going to have our pedals and we're going to have the steering tube. So we've got our bottom bracket here. This is a fix, Fiction Savage bottom bracket and is a two inch American bottom bracket sealed bearing and for a 19 millimeter diameter axle. So that'll get pressed in to the bottom bracket of the frame. And we have a Cane Creek headset here. And this is again for a one and an eighth inch steer tube. And I'll leave links to these parts in the description for as much of them as I can. And this I'll be using again for pressing in to the steer tube cups to be able to hold the steer tube of the front fork. And we also have our seat post clamp which will be pounded on to where the seat post inserts on the frame to clamp the seat post in place and this is just a hope aluminum again seat post and here we have a compression steerer tube cap this is just to plug the hole at the top of the steerer tube here we've got our hole and this is just meant to go in there to basically not have water get in there give it a nicer look and this I ordered off of eBay as well as the steer tube cap. So those are the main parts that we're going to need to be putting together the frame. Now let's move on to the engine of the bike, the power source. So for the engine kit, I ordered a Bikeberry Tuning Racing Series Stage 4 engine. Um, it's on Bikeberry.com is where I got it from, and I'll put a link in the description to that. And the engine is a flying horse engine, but Bikeberry basically just gave me a bunch of upgraded parts um, that will allow me to make it a little more high performance, a little stronger. So starting with the engine here, I've got the flying horse engine, and this will be upgraded with a high compression head to give us more torque on the piston stroke, um, and that will be replaced for the original head that's on here already and a high performance carburetor which will be going on here instead of the original carburetor that they gave me here so this will go on the outside of this tube here and then this high performance carburetor is going to go on to the intake and we've also got an ngk spark plug which is better quality it's basically not copper so it'll last longer it's a different material that'll last longer and that'll go in the spark plug hole instead of the original spark plug. So those are the upgrades right now that I'm doing to the engine. And I'll probably be doing a bunch more as I get it running and see what I need to be doing to basically get a little more power out of it. So the exhaust pipe I'm using is a chrome exhaust pipe. It's kind of in a banana shape. Um, it's got a muffler built in. Uh, exhaust comes out in the hole in the end here. And again, it's got that curved silver look that'll just go well with everything that I'm kind of wanting this theme throughout the whole bike. And we've got our rear sprocket here, which I'll probably be buying a new one of these because I'm going to be mounting the sprocket onto a disc brake mount on the wheel instead of the spokes because I've heard a lot of people where they'll put this sprocket on and it'll just come loose or it'll tear spokes out or whatever. So I'm going to be doing a different sprocket mount. Uh, which is another thing I really wanted to do this tutorial is I'm going to be trying to do things the right way instead of just throwing it on a crappy bike that I bought from Walmart or something. So this sprocket will probably be replacing but this is what came with the kit. Um, and then we've got our 415 gauge uh, drive chain here just for the motor to the sprocket to drive the back wheel. And the chain tensioner arm um, this also will probably be replaced um, down the road because a lot of people are saying this thing comes loose and it'll just, it's not good. So I might just do a spring loaded chain tension arm instead of this bolt on one uh, to give it a little more sturdy, sturdy mount. Here we've got the handle grips. The right one is the throttle and the left one is just a handle grip. And the throttle too, this is another part I'm not impressed about, is the quality. It just shakes around. As you guys can see, this is plastic. And so I'll probably be replacing these down the road as well. Um, so it's got a kill switch built into it and the throttle. And here we've got the throttle cable, just to connect from the throttle to the engine to make it go faster or slower. 
and we've got a clutch lever here. Um, it's spring loaded. It's got a little peg here that you can push down so you don't always have to hold the clutch in uh, when you're riding and then you can just release it if you want to also. And we've got clutch cable, clutch cable for that. They'll go from here to the clutch in the engine. So it'll basically be a motorcycle setup. We've got the clutch on the left and a front brake and the throttle on the right. And I might also do a rear brake, but I'm not sure yet. That'll come when I build it and get it running and I'll see if I need a rear brake as well. But the front brake does probably 90% of your stopping on a small bike. As long as you don't jam it on, you're not gonna flip forward. So that's the clutch. Another upgraded part that I was sent was this uh, NGK spark plug power supply. Um, and I'll probably be using that over the original one that came with the engine kit. Just because this is a little bit higher quality, longer lasting parts, and also better spark plug cap, better wire connection. So those are the main parts of the engine kit. We've also got our little connection bit box here. We've got a fuel filter fuel lines which may need to be upgraded as well I'm not sure um, and just the original spark plug that came with it which I'm probably not going to use I'm gonna keep it but that'll be the NGK spark plug instead it's got the sprocket clamps uh, the rubber sprocket clamps for the spokes which I'm not going to be using as I said I'm mounting the sprocket to the hub rather than the spokes so that is mostly it for the engine kit. A few more little things. I'll be building a rubber motor mount down the road to mount the motor and have it not come loose and have a little more wiggle room so that it's not as bumpy and rough of a ride. Um, and I'll be making that in the tutorial of uh, mounting the motor onto the bike. And I'm also going to probably be buying some split washers and lock nuts and other things that will just make everything really sturdy on there. And We've also got this other motor mount piece in case it doesn't fit your frame, but again, I'm, I'm doing my own frame, so it has a motor mount already built into it, specifically meant for a motorized bicycle with the built-in gas tank, and so this we will not be using. A lot of the parts from the engine kit we won't. Um, you don't have to replace it for high performance parts, it's just I want, I want this thing to last long, I want a little more torque and oomph up the hills and whatnot probably a lot of you will probably find the same when you start up your bike you'll be like ah oh, it's going a little bit slow so that's the reason for some of these upgraded parts so now moving on to a few more components of the bike build we've got the front wheel here and this is a Terramax wheel and it's pre-built it's 26 inch wheel and it's more or less for a commuter bike the reason I'm not doing mountain bike tires or road bike tires is Mountain bike tires are fatter, and road bike tires are skinny. Think about pedaling a road bike and pedaling a mountain bike on flat terrain. A mountain bike is a lot harder to pedal, takes a lot more energy. A road bike just kind of rolls along. So for the motor, ideally a road bike tire would be the best because it would just roll along. It would be easy on the motor, and I'm not going off-roading on this. But because it is motorized, because it's going to weigh more, I wanted something kind of in between. So that's why I'm doing commuter tires because I can basically get just thick enough to have a really strong build in the wheel but not necessarily too thin to break like a road bike tire and not fat to be a ton of stress on the motor. So this has 32 spokes, has a hub with a skewer hole to mount, again 100 millimeter spacing here to go in the front fork and let me show you guys how that's going to fit right here. We've got our front fork here and that's just going to mount on the front fork it's a 26 inch wheel and it's got six bolt disc brake mount on the other side so that's our front wheel now for the back wheel I actually don't have it with me the back wheel is being custom built at performance bicycle and the reason I'm custom building it is I found a lot of back wheels that would fit my needs but not really fit my needs I want something really strong because I'm thinking down the road I might put another seat on the back for an additional passenger. So for the rear wheel, I'm using a Velocity Chucker rim, and their tagline is looking for a bomb proof rim, you know. So I'm using a Velocity Chucker rim, it's super, super thick, really strong, and with 36 drillings for 36 spokes. And I'll be using DT Swiss non machined double butted spokes, and these are again really strong spokes as spokes will go. And I'm going to be using a Shimano. XT hub with 135 millimeter rear spacing to fit in the frame but the problem about this hub is it basically has a skewer axle through it 
but with a Shimano hub you can change the skewer axle, the hollow axle, for a solid one. So I'm actually going to be having the wheel builders do that for me. When they build the wheel, they're going to change out my hollow axle and put a bolt-on axle through there. And there are also other videos on YouTube that how to service a Shimano hub, so it'll be kind of like that, taking the axle out, but I'm putting a longer bolt-on axle through for strength purposes again. It's got a free hub cassette mount on one side and a six bolt disc brake mount on the other side and the six bolt disc brake mount is what we really want in this because that's hopefully how I'm going to try to find a way to mount the sprocket to that in a really strong way. So that's the back wheel. It is being built and we've got a front wheel. We've got a seat. Of course you're going to want a seat. I did not bother getting some skinny lightweight seat. I just got a nice cushy commuter bike seat and this is about $17 on Amazon and you'll also need a seat post that will go in there I haven't ordered that yet but pretty easy to find you could even just buy a metal tube or something cut it down if it's the right diameter um, now I've also got mirrors here and these are mostly for fancy look I just I'm gonna love that it's got the mirrors again it's got the chrome pole leading up to the mirror and I'm probably going to be ordering lights and blinkers and a horn down the road. Again, just safety requirements on the bike for being on the road all the time. And last but not least, I've got some, I've got the crank set. So we've got our axle here, 19 millimeter axle, it's still packed. I ordered it from eBay. And uh, these are the cranks, the two crank arms. These are just BMX crank arms and I'll be unpacking them and showing you how they mount on when I put together the bottom bracket set. So these are the key parts that'll go down there. I don't have pedals yet, but you will need those as well. Any kind you want, I'm probably gonna do some stronger metal pedals, but this, this part doesn't need to be the best quality just because the motor will mostly be pushing you. You're not gonna be worrying about pedaling or torque from the pedals. So you could get cheap pedals if you want to. Now that's not it. Of course, there will probably be other problems I run into, other parts I'm going to need, so I will absolutely share those with you as I find the need for them. Um, tools and things I'll be sharing as the tutorials go along. So that's mostly it for part one, guys. That's the parts you're going to need to get started. If you have any other bike frames or bikes or any other questions about motor mounting or any of that that you want to get started on, I will have other tutorials after this following, probably about seven parts, I'm assuming. Um, but feel free, if I don't cover something, comment below. Please let me know any questions, and I'll do my best to answer them. Let me know how your bike's coming along. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them, absolutely. And don't forget to subscribe. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Until part two.